Hello everyone, how are you doing? I'm Thiago, your community manager, and this is... Hey guys, I'm Luca, the resident nerd here at least. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of our many resident nerds. Uh, we're here today to present you our full Astro Looters bundle. A lot of people have been expecting this one very, very anxiously. We do have a couple of announcements before we get into the actual models though. And they are fun ones. Okay, uh, let's start off with the videos for this month. Uh, we have um, a few different things to, to talk about. Uh, we're gonna have uh, a painting video for the, the ships um, yes. for this month. Uh, I don't know exactly when they're coming out, but you can expect them this month. We also have a kind of different take on the, the video, the trailer for this bundle. So um, expect something coming out next week, I believe or the other one, or the beginning of the other one. And finally, we will also have uh, a painting guide for Owen Newmark, our 12-month loyalty reward for fantasy. Yes, and actually, uh, let's just talk a little bit about the, the loyalty rewards. Uh, first off, Owen Newmark is our 12-month loyalty reward. Yeah. This one got a little bit delayed. Uh, our, our next one is coming today, don't worry about it. Uh, uh, but on Mark, we're gonna have a full uh, a full painting guide for him, and uh, Mars is gonna bring the her her whip, if you can even call her uh, call it a work in progress. Yeah. By the end of the live stream, so stick around to see it. It's awesome. the The full statue is just absolutely amazing, and what and uh, while we're on the subject of loyalty rewards. Let's talk a little bit about uh, our our next three month loyalty reward. Uh, Morgan, our hex witch, and her, and Shrody, right? Uh, her familiar, which is a uh, who? What is Shrody? It's a mystery, right? Is is he a is he a cat? A crow? Like a, a, a little imp thing? Is he a it's monkey? A, a beastie? A thingy? Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. It's it's the it's the mystery. It's like Schroeder's familiar. It's it's, it's a yeah. being that comes from magic from where magical creatures come from. It's just a really yeah. difficult to pin down. Uh, but this is a really cool yeah. loyalty reward. I'm really excited about. Yes, it. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Morgan and Shodi are going to be av are available or are going to be av available just a little bit later today, mm -hmm. in 32 and 75 millimeter. And the statue version is going to be available next week by Friday of next week. Uh, the, we do have like the the model is basically done. Don't worry, guys. There are not going to be any more delays than that uh, because the model is done. We have finished printing the, the actual statue version, but we want to fit all the pieces together and see if there's like any little edges that we need to cut off or anything like that. We want to give you guys the best possible experience. Something else that has been asked about in the community is if we're going to have a, a version of Shodi uh, that is separate from the, uh, like a separate Shodi version for 32 and 75. That is coming as well. Uh, we are going to have uh, a, a version of, of, of Morgan with Shodi not on the broom, so it's just her. And we're also going to have a couple more surprises. Yeah. So by the end of next week and probably earlier, we're gonna have a prop as part of this loyalty reward. Uh, it's a it's a fairly simple prop, so don't worry, it's not taking more time from the actual sculpting process of this mini. It's not delaying it or anything, uh, and it is the wand. So we're gonna be able to have her. Her awesome, awesome wand as a prop. I love magic items you can interact in the table. Like the yeah. wand, you, you're gonna use that like pretty much all the time. Yeah, it can be a it can be a, a magic item, or it can just you know if you're doing a, a cosplay for Harry Potter or something. Yeah. it is an option. And well, and you may be wondering, uh, am I eligible for these loyalty rewards? Well, here's how how you find out. You find out by going to our website and checking out the loyalty reward page. But should you go to the, our regular website or should you go to our new one? Yes, we do have a new platform and uh, we've been doing a lot of improvements to it. And let's just check it out a little bit. Uh, just a second, you guys. 
there we go so this is my account on a new pr platform when you log in you're gonna uh you're actually going to go straight to the my loot section and a fun thing about the new my loot section is that there is a search function we are still improving it but if you type for instance goblin uh minus the g yes all the bundles that have a goblin will show up right all of the products that you have and that have a goblin so that's just uh the start of the implementation uh but we also have a, a lot of like really really cool features for instance if i go into the astro looters bundle here and i go into the ooh, let me just yeah if i go into the download section and my mouse is skipping a little bit my cursor just a second you guys uh, so you can select like whatever category you want to, uh, you can select a particular ship and a particular, uh, a particular scale and type of model. Uh, you can also select, I believe you can select like a, a category and download everything in the category. I'm not sure, but I'm not sure if that's available right now. Uh, but, uh, we have like the, the whole bundle here, like everything is uh as uh as stratified as possible so you can ha have like uh download whatever you want and you don't need to download everything but if you do want to download everything we do have like the whole bundle here so we have like the all of the ships in every uh in every conceivable like combination of the of the the enemies and all of the the crew the heroes the busts so you can do just download the whole bundle if you want to uh, another thing that you can do uh, if you want to know if you are eligible for the loyalty rewards you can go into the about section about loyalty and you can see like the full explanation of how the loyalty rewards work and a little and a little uh and a little infographic here on the on the loyalty rewards for fantasy and for sci-fi so the new platform is really really awesome uh we do have a placeholder name for it right now it's mageshat.com uh, uh if you could if you someone could actually post that in chat that would be awesome uh so mageshat.com and the way you log in for the first time uh i'm not gonna do it right here but you go to the, basically go to the login page and you need to use the same email you use for your regular account, but then you need to go to the forgot password section because it's going to be a different password. So yeah, this is it for the new platform for now. It's very, very awesome. Definitely check it out and give us your, give us your feedback on it. Uh, it is, uh, we are trying to improve it as, as fast as possible. We are, we have hired new members for our development team and the guys are doing an amazing job at it. Uh, so yeah, that's it out. Tell us what you tell us what you what you like about it, what you don't like about it, and we're gonna make it. Uh, the, it's not going to be the new platform for long. It's going to be the loot platform. Okay. So yeah, this is it for the platform for now. And I think we are actually. Let's see here. What else do we have? Uh, Let's finish up the, the announcement so we can get to the actual bundle right now. Uh, so, as I said, the alert reward for uh, uh, Morgan is going to be available a little bit later today uh, in 32 and 75 and the Satchel version next week. We do have a bundle that is uh, available right now for, uh, for a special price. Uh, it's a special promotion and it's the Mad Mages Experiment Bundle. And it has stuff like the, it has some really cool stuff like an owl bear. It has the mad mage. It has a couple, a couple of different fun aberrations. Like yeah. a, it has a, I believe it has a, a chul or something, right? Yes. Uh, uh, it also has a, is it a chimera or a, I don't, re I actually don't quite remember right now. It, yeah, you can, if you could go to the, we're, we actually can show it to you guys on our uh, new website. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Ooh, don't I actually have it here? Yeah, just a second, you guys. We're figuring it out. Season one, I believe. Perfect. A Mad Mage's experiment. 
there we go uh and we're gonna show like the contents of the bundle for you guys right now there we go uh yeah you can actually go to the uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah, we do have a, a, a druid with a, a wild shape bear possibility. We have uh, Kax or original dragonborn paladin. Uh, we have we do have a chimera. So if you could, could just click on enemy, so we can have like a yeah. There we go. Uh, we do have a chimera. We have a stone golem. We have uh, basically a, a Golarion, a chill, a. An Atten. So we have a, a lot of cool stuff in this bundle. Uh, so definitely check it out. It's for us. It's available for a special price right now. I also love the objects for this bundle. They're eternally useful for like. Yes, I. Yeah. It, yeah, for for scenario building and for building like a laboratory or a, or a library, library space, yes. uh, a med mage's sanctum, mm -hmm. med mage's tower, or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> definitely works for that. Uh, yeah. And yeah, definitely stick around until the end of the live stream. Uh, we're going to have uh, a couple of reveals, mm -hmm. like the name of our next fantasy bundle. And without further ado, let's start talking about Astro Looters. Okay. Luca, if you want to take it away for us. Let's talk a little bit about the lore that we've uh, been having till this point. Um, we started at, at Goblins, uh, where we faced uh, a threat to Panshaw that was uh, this kind of horde of intelligent-led um, goblins that we found out that were being controlled by this Watcher in its lair uh, called Zyatrox, if I'm not um, completely... Zyatrox, Zyatrox. yeah, it's, it's one of those very, very difficult names that yeah. I actually had some input in and... Once I had to say it out loud, out, I regretted it immediately. Absolutely. Um, and after we actually uh, beat this Cyatrox, something weird happened in its lair. Uh, a, 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 a portal tore uh, into this weird place where gravity didn't work quite work. Uh, ships came in flying in there. Uh, a, a dragon came flying in there and kind of pulled the, the characters into a different dimension uh, where they joined up with a crew called the Spacefaring Capybaras and uh, into their ship, the Dragon's Prize. Yes, we are having a little bit of fun with this bundle. Oh yeah, it's kind of uh, a different one. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of stuff uh, right now. Uh, so, uh, I just wanted um, to point out that we've had this bundle planned out for months, right? Mm -hmm. So, we like since the end of last year, we knew we were going to do something with the Astral Plane. And we were probably going to do something with uh, Spelljammer as well. Because Spelljammer is such a big part of D&D. And if we didn't like combine those two, uh, we were never going to do any of them, right? Like, they do have a lot of like niche, kind of niche minis, kind of niche concepts going on. Mm -hmm. uh, but they, they fit, to, fit together very well. Uh, we were aware... That there, uh, there was there were some rumors going around of Spelljammer being launched this year, but we had no idea how like on time we were going to be for it or anything. Yeah, if it I'm was not mistaken. At the time, they were just saying about like releasing a setting that had not been explored at Fifth Edition. Yes. So yeah, uh, and a lot of people were saying well, Spelljammer maybe, uh, Atas maybe, Dark Sun right, Dragonlance stuff like that. Uh, so you know. When they actually announced Spelljammer, we were like, oh. And when they announced when they were going to release Spelljammer, they were like, oh, this is very, very good timing. Uh -huh. So, yeah, uh, we do have a couple of items here, a couple of little ships, for instance, that were made specifically to work with 5th edition uh, Spelljammer rules. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to get to talking about this. Uh, so, let's start for first mini which is actually going to be our first hero uh garwin galan gala nodel those difficult old yes. names <laughs> yeah uh, uh they are very very elven names tend to be very very you have to curl your tongue a you lot you kind of have to feel it yeah yeah uh this is the concept art uh right here Yes, right here. This is the concept art by Guilherme Neri. Some awesome, awesome concept art. We originally had this guy uh, named as a as a elven samurai, but he's just an elven fighter. Uh, 
And yeah, a couple of people were actually bothered by this. It was a, a, a mistake uh, and we have corrected it. So, uh, and yeah, people have been asking us about when are we going to have samurais and, and stuff like that in, in fantasy. And what I have to say to you guys is sometime, not soon, but you know, it's in the plans. It's, it's in the been plans. talked about. It's been talked about. Yes. It is just a little bit of a. Uh, it is just a little bit difficult to fit into, into an actual bundle, right? So let's check out the actual sculpt. This one by Samuel Salis, and it is an amazing sculpt. Uh, he does have, you know, he does have an elven feel to him. He he feels a little bit like royalty, right? Uh, uh, and he is like very very well armored. But it is a very ornate armor, yeah. uh, and you can feel this. Uh, uh, this either like he can work as a as a fighter or as a, a ranger, you know, a, a, a dual wielding ranger, something like that. It would work very well. Uh, uh, a long sword or a, you know, just a. It could yeah. I I would call it on his right hand, a, a long sword. And a, a dagger or short sword on his left hand. Mm -hmm. It is very, a very, very cool sculpt. I love how everything to him has this kind of classically elven kind of fine details feel. Even the pouches at the side, yes, kind of feel elven. Yeah, they are not. They are not exactly like. They are not your standard pouches, right? Your standard like human-made adventurous uh -huh. pouch, adventurous pouches. They are pouches. made to last about two hundred yeah. years. Yeah, even like even like the cloak. This is not a cloak. This this is a a a, a sign of station, right? Yes. It's a half cloak. Mm -hmm. It's not protecting him from <laughs> anything really. Uh, it's just to it's just to look cool and float uh, and flutter in the wind. Yes. Uh, but if we want to check out the the. Uh, some more details on this one. Let's check out the bust version of this mini. Okay. And let me just. There we go. And here we go. This is the bust version of this mini. And he <laughs> does have kind of a. And this fits elves so much. It's kind of a, a smug and condescending look, right? Very, 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 very regal. A little bit uh, Vulcan from, from Star Trek. Yeah. Like, the Vulcans from Star Trek are just, you know, space elves. And these guys are astral elves. And the, the lore for the astral elves in D&D in D &D is that they are elves that live in the astral sea. Mm -hmm. Or in the astral plane. And so they, they live pretty much more than elves. So they're... <laughs> yeah. They live pretty much forever. Yes. Yes. Uh, because people don't age in the in the astral plane, they don't even mature. It's like it's very very weird, right? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I guess this is enough. Uh, and again, thank you so much, uh, Samuel Salis, for this amazing sculpt. And let's move on to our next character. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, let me hand this yeah, off to Luca. Uh, and our next character is. Uh, she's not her, a returning character, but is, she's family of a returning character. Yes. Let's take a look at Elizabeth Gale. Descendant to Eleanor Gale from Ship Ahoy. Yeah, so we felt like... Uh, I don't think she was like originally so, supposed to be related to, to Eleanor at all. Uh, but once Clay Gianni Silva uh, delivered us this concept art, we were like, yeah, she doesn't necessarily look like Eleanor, but there's the same feel, right? Every can, everything kind of fitted together there. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, this is our pirate, kind of our, uh, not pirate, our, our kind of our crew captain for the, for the spacefaring capybaras and the dragon surprise ship. And let's take a look at the scope by Rafael Magalhães. And she is just an amazing character. Uh, there's just a lot of details that go into this character mm -hmm. uh the clothes the clothes she's wearing the adornments the the necklace the just the hair her hair is absolutely amazing i Very absolutely much love feels it feels like that swashbuckly character with uh all different kind of accessories throughout the the outfit yes so, yeah. and just like the detail on the on the sword i love it yes 
So yeah, she's just an amazing character to have as a player character, right? Or if you want to, this would be a very, very badass NPC. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, some people end up falling into the trope of like the super NPC. Yes. <laughs> uh, this would be a, a fine one to be that. That character that is there to help out your players or to fill out the the party when someone misses the when someone misses the game night. Uh -huh. So yeah, this this would be a super NPC or a it's, very very cool player. It's not character. quite the, the quest giver, it's the quest taker. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Um, I love I love kind of the 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 action pose that she has, kind of uh, integrating the stairway. Um, into the pose and, and, and a fun a fun thing that happened uh, Tiago in the beginning of the live stream thought whoa she's, she, she probably was printed wrong because she's kind of yeah she's a she's, bit she's kind of petite yeah. let's say so, uh, I, so compared to like uh, let's say let's stay you here the, I'll take the astro elf back yeah she's quite smaller than the astro elf yeah. but it, it's, it's one of those situations where the uh, Gorwin is kind of like Six foot two or something like that, mm -hmm. and uh, Elizabeth is not anywhere near that. Yeah. She's just a little bit smaller. Uh, and let's check out all of her glorious detail on the bust here. And let's let me try to get the light right here. And who? Let's see here what's happening on chat. Uh, yeah, she has like this the this really really cool necklace. Uh, that we sh should probably do as a prop at some point in the future. Oh, that would be awesome, yeah. Yeah, she does have like a short sword on her on her hip there. And I would call this a scimitar, her, her sword. Like her really, really cool, mm -hmm. like intricately, intricate, uh, intricately detailed sword. And again, just like her expression, the hair. Oh, this hair, I absolutely love it. The curly hair. Yes, very detailed. She kind of has this... Crossing into uh, steampunky, but but there with spelljammer vibes, kind of. Yeah, D and D does have like a, it is very. Uh, what's the what's the word that I'm that I'm looking for here? Uh, it's very anachronistic. Yes. So you have stuff in D and D like uh, you have people dressed as cavemen, and you have people dressed as you know, kind of 18th centuryish. Uh, Pirates or privateers, stuff like that, mm -hmm. stuff that you would see in a in a like a serialized uh, serialized movie series from the thirties, right? Kind of yeah. a, a very swashbuckler, maybe Flash Gordon kind of stuff. I love the like how asymmetric her her cloth is as well. Mm -hmm. Her her top is here with like the the bushy sleeve on one side and then the armor on the other. Because that's how, how you identify a hero, right? Yeah. Just like the the one kind of uh, kind of kind of random shoulder pauldron. Uh -huh. uh, so yeah, her clothing has a lot of personality and kind of exhales who <laughs> Actually, she is. Let me. Uh, I think I was. Oh. Yeah, I think she is in frame now. Okay. Okay. There so let's move on to our next character, our next hero, or third and last hero for this bundle but this is kind of a double one so let's talk uh let's go through all of the concept art first we have uh, an interesting question here for yes. uh from uh, bare bones are these primed or just high high-end resin these are actually primed yeah these are all actually primed yes. we had a little bit of an issue with our resin uh more recently the form the formula the formula wasn't quite right and uh, it do just doesn't show off the detail on camera. So we basically had to prime all of our models. Uh, it, it, it is a little bit of a hassle, but we are in touch with the, with the manufacturer of our resin and we are getting it fixed. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's check out the concept arts for our ne next couple of characters, technically. Uh, first is Boris Pummeler, our gnome artificer. And I believe it is it is artificer, not artificer. It depends on the it depends on the I believe for like for D and D is artificer, but for Magic the Gathering is artificer. Yeah. Uh, but they are owned by the same company, and people go <laughs> to the right. same to the same uh, planes of existence now. So it's a little bit confusing. But anyways, this is some awesome awesome concept art by Mariana Morgan, mm -hmm. and his mount. Was also uh, also has concept art by Mariana Morgan. So if you could show now the 
the giant space capybara. Oh yeah. <laughs> and we we actually have like a uh, and we do have a version of the of Boris mounted on his giant space capybara. And the history for this one, for those of you who are familiar with Spelljammer, uh, must be like you guys must have an inkling of the of like what what is happening here. What is this crazy thing happening? Uh, and yeah, while I talk about this, let's check out the the scoped by uh, the scoped by bodies, which is was done by Samuel Salis. Uh, while the scoped for uh, the giant space capybara was done by Douglas Martins, mm -hmm. uh, Woody, the space, uh, the space capybara, the yeah, that's that's his, his official name. <laughs> uh, the and uh, let let's just talk about this a little bit. Uh, we are always look. People are always asking us to do more artificers, but they are kind of hard to fit in a bottle, right? They are not. Uh, other teams, other character teams, tend to go tend to just fit better with most medieval fantasy bundles. So when we decided to do Spelljammer, which you know it it's inspired, it's sci-fi inspired. It's a little bit more steampunk. It was the perfect opportunity to bring back. A, uh, an artificer and a gnome artificer at that gnomes also have like a big relation with spell jammer and spell jamming vessels mm -hmm. uh, in D&D gnomes created uh, the giant space hamsters we didn't want to infringe in wizard's copyright or anything so we went a little bit more creative we and got we got the opportunity to, to put a, a little bit more Brazilian uh, yeah. flying yes so, so that's when we decided to create the giant space capybara. Mm -hmm. And first off, let's show off the scope of just Boris. Uh, and again, very, very detailed with a lot of like the, mm -hmm. the big mechanical hand here. It could be a prosthesis, could be just like a power glove. The intricate hammer. This is not just a, a, a smasher type of character. This is a character that like cares about his, uh, about his craft. Yeah. Right, uh, and we can probably see this a little bit better in the bust here for Boris. Like, and I absolutely love like this uh, kind of mechanic uh, or old timey captain like beard that he has going on. The chest hair, the <laughs> chest hair is just the on point hair. for this one. It's perfect. Yeah, and and uh, for the lore for this bundle, he has kind of this very uh, Norse kind of uh, vibe to him. He has the the Mjolnir uh, hammer, the the kind of uh, eye patch to kind of represent that. So we are kind of um, yeah, his his he's a little bit inspired by uh, by Thor and Odin yes. and like Yarn Gripper, right? The the, uh -huh. the gloves of Thor and uh, Odin's eye patch. So, yeah, this is a very, very fun character. It was a very, very fun character for us to do. And, of course, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't bring out the actual giant space capybara. Uh, this one, we have glued uh, Boris onto her already. Uh, so, I believe so. Uh, oh, actually, I think it may just be... It'd be placed, right? It's, it's just plugged in. Oh, it's probably some... some... Some putty, uh, yeah, some putty. Yeah, so it, it it has some putty here. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna uh, take it out or anything. It looks very much like a noose. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is the giant space capybara. We didn't just do a capybara. We did like uh, we we gave her some uh, some gear. Uh, is she male or, fe more or female? I don't know actually. No, the name is Woody. So, oh yeah, it I'm could be. Sure. I think it could be either or, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we didn't. I don't think we gave it parts. No, we didn't give it any parts. <laughs> and not any visible parts, anyways. That would be uh, we a do, level of detail. As Brazilians, and uh, we do have a special relationship with, with capybaras. Uh -huh. And especially in our state, they are one of the animals that uh, happen kind of naturally in our state. Uh, and uh, it, it is not my personal knowledge, but I hear they actually taste pretty good. Oh, yeah, didn't know that. Yeah, they actually taste pretty good. Like a, uh, the uh, I hear or so I heard or so I heard. I have never actually eaten capybara. The legends tell. <laughs> yeah, 
but they actually taste like uh, I heard it described like pork, but better. Huh. Uh, so yeah, uh, but yeah, they are just like the chillest animal, and I thought they would make a very very good addition to our collection. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so uh, let's see if we have any questions here in chat. Yeah, and while I do that, uh, let's move. Let me uh, talk a little bit about our next character. And now we're going to to talk a little bit about the the rest of the of the crew for the for the space faring capybaras. The this character specifically is a hippo folk warrior. Uh, this one, this concept art was done by Mariana Morgan, uh, and. You will notice he's not carrying a blunderbuss or anything, right? We decided to go with like a, a, a straight up warrior. Uh, you can already find like hippo folk out there with a lot of different uh, firearms. It's kind of third thing. Uh, but we wanted to do something different, something that we you normally won't find uh, with other creators or other providers. So we just gave him a big ass mace. Something that can you can al also use in a, a more conventional medieval fantasy uh, adventure. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so let's check out the sculpts. This one by Victor Araujo. Uh, yeah, and this guy is just he's he's a chunker. Let's put it that way. He's a big big guy. And he is in a medium-sized base, but, you know, he's a hippo folk. We want to represent that. So he's like on the largest largest possible size of medium, right? The, the top end of medium. Uh, if we put him on a, like a, a large base, you could consider him a, a large creature, I think. He's big enough for that. But, you know... We want to. We want uh, player players to actually be able to use him in a game. Uh, so yeah, he's just a very very fun character. He is wearing kind of uh, kind of lemon or or uh, leather armor or something, and there's just like all these cool little details, like the the stitches that that bind the plates of the armor together. It's almost like there are some uh, some ancient Chinese armor that looks like this, uh -huh. right? It's the, it's the plates of uh, of leather and metal uh, like sewn together. If I'm not mistaken, there is even like kind of um, st uh, studded leather kind of armor type that kind of looks like that. Almost like the... Um, the cloth armors. What? What are the name for that? If, if Chat even knows, uh, like um, a gambeson or something. Like a gambeson, kind of. Yeah. And I also love the detail on the cape that goes around his neck. It yeah, it, it looks a little like from the front. It looks a little bit like a scarf or something, yeah. right? Uh, it does have like, uh, it does hide his uh, double or triple chin or something. Uh -huh. or but you know, the you, you, chin. this guy you can't fault him. Like he probably actually has big bones. Yes. You know. It's uh, he's a he's a big guy. He's a chunker, and I absolutely love him. Uh, let's see here uh, what's happening in chat. Uh, yeah, yeah, and, and it is you know it is an opportunity to do you know a uh, 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 a kind of different body for a miniature. You know, a, a hero doesn't have to be uh, doesn't have to uh, be what's the what's the expression for it. Uh, a hero doesn't need to be ripped. Yes. Right? To uh, to go out hearing. <laughs> uh, we have a comment by Bare, uh, Bare Bones. Uh, Thank you for a hippo folk without a gun. One of my players wanted to start to, to do the standard artificer uh, hippo folk, and I'm tempted to curse him to for to curse him to force him to think outside the box. So yeah, that's fun. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah, and, and you can find hippo folk with guns a, a lot. Like they, they are done a lot. Uh, some people may say they are done to death. Uh, but one of the things that we, we we like to experiment with is that the characters don't need to necessarily conform to a, a stereotype, and we like to do some some different stuff once in a while. Uh, and I think yeah, I think this one. Okay. Yeah, let me just hand off some stuff to Luca. 
Uh, and yeah, next up we have our Limbo Shaper Monk. I love this mini, by the way. Uh, so the uh, this concept art was done by Clay Gianni Silva. It does use something that we love to use, mm -hmm. which is somehow create the illusion of something magic. In this case, of her floating in a in a lotus position, uh, with uh, and. Yeah, I, uh, she's absolutely amazing. Let's check out the sculpt by Douglas Martins. I think she's actually right here. And this one is the one that we have for uh, uh, inside our, our Dragon Sprite ship. We have a little space. It's kind of like an arcane circle or something. And it is that space for her. So instead of, instead of gluing her to the base, you can glue her there if you want to and it's designed for her she's designed to to fit inside there and be the pilot for the ship for the for this spell jamming vessel if you will so let's check out the the actual mini here and again this bundle has a lot of characters that have uh, some very very interesting hair right i love uh, the hair for her yeah first we had uh we had elizabeth and like just off the details here just it's just so fun. All of the, the different braids and the way her, her hair mm -hmm. is very, very wavy. Let's see if the autofocus works. Can I, should I try to, oh, okay. It's not going to work. Uh, and yeah, just like very interesting stuff. She does have like a staff on her back here. And uh, uh, she's on a, a very, very cool pose. And just, you know, floating around. And, and, and you can actually see like to the through the folds of her of her robe here uh and it's just so cool because this one is actually like from her sleeve mm -hmm. she has kind of like one of those uh really long kind really really long kind long of yeah, yeah the sleeves i love how the base also interacts with her floating it feels like uh dust is kind of gathering and yeah it, it, it does have a little bit of a magical effect around the base here yeah. you guys are uh Maybe you'll see it, maybe not. It's truly a very evocative mini. It just it screams what it is. Yeah, they are all, like, all the mini sort is bundled. Mm -hmm. Even the ones that you look at it, you look at it in the concept art, or you look at it from just the, the render, and you think, oh yeah, this is going to be like a, a, a more standard mini, right? Uh, and, no, like, it's there's just so much detail, and so, like, the, the little nicks and, and everything that goes into the into the actual model and it's it's all so great just so many cool details in every single model uh let's see here yeah so next up we have or just before we go on yes. i love this comment from uh crazy round man uh, it's funny to think that a floating guru scheme technique can be used to, to sculpt a miniature like one of those uh, gurus that kind of float around because there's a, a pole in there. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Same concept. <laughs> Same concept. It's it's just, you know, those guys, some of those guys uh, are, are kind of, they are street performers, right? They are street artists. Mm -hmm. And it's like a stage magi magician. You know it's not real magic, but what even is real magic? Like, if you go right. to watch his show and you are filled with wonder, isn't that magical enough? Like, just get out of there wondering how they did it and being surprised. You know, it's part of the show. It's part of showbiz. Those three seconds that you, you haven't figured out what's going on yet. That's yeah. That's the true magic. Yes. Uh, so next up, we have the Mermillion Rogue. Which I believe is, is getting into the other crew, the, the Elder Raider crew. Yes, I believe so. Uh, so the, the Mermillion Rogue... It's a uh, first off. Uh, it was uh, the concept art is by Clay Jenny Silva. Again, some amazing concept. We are going for like a swashbuckler kind of pirate or privateer vibe with this bundle, but it's not just what we did with Ship Ahoy, right? Who and I dropped my pen here. Uh, it's not just what we did with Ship Ahoy. It's it's something more. It has a particular style. And once you look at all of the minis, you you see like, well, they may not be buying their clothes at the same at the same shop, but they are buying it in the same city, maybe, right? Mm -hmm. And the Mermillion Rogue is kind of an example of that. Let's check out the sculpt by Victor Araujo. 
Uh, and again, the Mermillion is a race that we did. Who? When we, did we do a Mermillion for the first time? I think we did a, a four armed Mermillion for the first time actually in our sci fi bundles. Yes. Uh, it was the. It, it is uh, in the welcome pack actually for sci fi. Mm -hmm. And then we decided, well, this is a race that can actually work very, very well for fantasy as well. So I think we did it first for fantasy, also in Ship Ahoy. Yes. Yeah. So we did it in Ship Ahoy and we are bringing it back. Because there is a nautical theme to, mm -hmm. the, to this. So yeah, Mermillions fit very well. You know, it's always good to have a, an excuse to do a to do a mohawk in fantasy. Yes. There's a lot of mohawks <laughs> in our sci-fi subscription already. And we like to, to vary our has, hairstyles a little bit. So let's check out the, the actual sculpt here. And again, just like the amount of detail in every single like humanoid character in this bundle is just absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he is carrying like his four wielding weapons. Yes. Uh, there are some rules in... Uh, it, it, as it turns out, and it, this wasn't planned at all, there are a, there are a couple of races in... Uh, I think the Hadoze and the... Who, what's the, the, the Uz one? The, the, um, oh, I, I, I forgot. I think I for it's Uz folk, isn't no. it? Something like that? Uzoid? Uh, I don't remember right now. Yeah. There are a couple of races in the 5th in fifth, the fifth edition Spelljammer uh, book that actually, uh, they can do like, they have extra hands or they can have like pseudopods mm -hmm. that they can use it that unfortunately... They can't use them to attack, but they can use it to at least carry stuff. We do actually have a, a, a playable race uh, for, the Mermillion. for the Mermillion. It's in our, I think, sci-fi um, menagerie. It's in the freebies page for for yeah. So definitely, side, so. yeah. So definitely check out the the freebies page once you're once you're done with the live stream, mm -hmm. and check out. Uh, we have a couple of different races there. Uh, we have the. We have the the, the Petaloid as well, which is a very nice one. Yes. I, I think we should bring the Petaloid to fantasy at some point. Oh, that would be wonderful! Yeah, yeah, like a plant race. We need what best to be a druid than a plant? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you not only can you speak to plants, you are one. You are one. <laughs> Thankfully, <laughs> you can speak to plants. Yeah, but like all the little details, the the little uh, dangly beat bits there and the little charms and the actual scabbards for the four daggers uh it's just so much cool stuff of this character mm -hmm. uh just like all like every character in this bundle there's so much going on um uh okay so let's move on to our next one uh anything interesting in chat yeah, I'm really happy about a comment from uh, Bear, Bear Bones. The detail your team brings to the table is, uh, is the number one reason I love loot. Um, that's really great to hear. It's really great to know that you are uh, satisfied with the, the, the level of detailing that we, we put in our minis. Uh, that's really thanks to our team and, and uh, you know. Yeah, it, 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 is a, it is a joint effort. Like our, our concept artists, our, our sculptors, the the leads for the teams right or or art director Alvaro Leandro Pavanelli our 3D team lead for fantasy and our concept art team lead uh, Guilherme Mota like it's a team effort to make sure like all of the bun bundle all of the models in the bundle vibe together well mm -hmm. and that they are like each and every one of them is as uh, is as incredible as it can possibly be so yeah. Thank you so much for that, guys. Uh, so yeah, let's check out the next character, which is also the character that has our uh, the next bust. It's the Cthulhu Folk Privateer. Oh yeah. So we did Cthulhu Folk. Uh, I think we did Cthulhu Folk in July of last year or June of of 2021. Yeah, the, the brains and tentacles. Of brains and tentacles yeah. bundle, which was actually uh, on sale until. Earlier today, uh, mm -hmm. until the, the sale changed to Ma a Mad Mage's experiment. And this is a, a, a little bit of a different type of Cthulhu folk. When they find themselves in the Astro Sea, they have to do things a little bit differently, right? Maybe they are not part of a, a hive mind. Maybe they are a little bit more individualistic. And if they can, uh, and if they can cast spells 
which usually gets them banned from their colony mm -hmm. uh, because they, they, you know, they don't believe in uh, arcane magic or some some stupid thing like that. It kind of rivals the power of the of psionics, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, then, but they, if they have arcane magic, they can use it to fly a spell jamming vessel yes. uh, to to just hook up to a helm and and make it work. Uh, there are some different ways in which uh, helms worked for them in early, earlier editions of D and D. Uh, they have kind of like narrowed it down and simplified it in Five E to just you know if you can cast spells, you can pilot one of these ships. One of these ships. Uh, who pilot a sheep? We should do like a, a giant, <laughs> not a ram, not a not a, a giant goat like we have for for uh, gardening. We should do like a giant sheep. I love the sheep with wings as, as well, just being able to pilot it. <laughs> yeah, yes. It has a, a good feel to it. <laughs> Let's check out the, the actual sculpt. So the, the concept art for the Cthulhu Folk Privateer is by Clay Gianni Silva. And the sculpt is by Luis Silveira. And uh, people were actually wondering uh, like how, you know, it is a squid-faced monster. It is a Cthulhu-inspired monster, and it may be it may look a bit silly if you don't do it right. Mm -hmm. uh, I think with the you know a private with a, a like tentacles for a beard, it is something that has been done in, in like Pirates of the Caribbean, Davy Jones, which is was an awesome design, and it, it kind of inspired us to do this character. Uh, so yeah, and it looks actually amazing, just absolutely awesome. Uh, and once you get to to actually like get a close up on it, uh, you can see like all of these little details. And I, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to show it on camera, but there's just all of these little details on camera that give him texture, and it's just you know not just a, a bald uh, bubbles bubbles head. I love how the the styling of like this this octopus head kind of complements on the the brow and kind of the piratey expression that he has in his face. <laughs> yes, it just really fits. And, and again, like all of these little details, you know, mismatched pauldrons here, mm -hmm. uh, and again, kind of a capelet, right? It's not it's not even a half cape; it's just like a quarter cape. Yes, it's a it's a little capelet a thing. A capelet and something just in his belt that kind of feels like a second little. Um, I don't know what that would be. Is that part of his, his clothing? Is oh, no, th this is part of his, his coat, actually. Oh, I that's think. an overcoat. Yeah, that's an overcoat. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, but, you know, he's wearing, like, a half, uh, like, a, a capelet over his overcoat. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, just because you're a brain-eating monstrosity, uh, aberration, actually. <laughs> Anyways, uh, it doesn't mean you can't dress nice. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, he's dressed very, very nicely. Uh, and he would be a, a cool addition. This is, the, this is the pirate captain that your players should have no qualms about killing, right? Yes. Uh, they are kind of, Cthulhu folk are kind of an excuse to, you know, it's okay to kill those guys. They're they just are plainly evil. <laughs> yeah, they are plainly evil. They are, uh, they are like, never nice. Mm -hmm. Never trust them. I love the, the again, the, the object interaction. Uh, in this mini, and I love that even the bench or, or kind of this this railing part has the feel of the bundle. It kind of has this this kind of um, edged point, and it kind of really feels it really fits with the the art for this bundle. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So someone is mentioning about my my comment earlier. Uh, let's see here. Crazy Round Man is saying ship ahoy, ramming speed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of jokes about ship ships now. Uh, okay, so let's move on to our next character for our. Oh, actually, before we move on, I should show off the actual uh, hand. Uh, sorry about that, folks. I should show off the actual bust for the Cthulhu Folk Privateer. So, just look at all of that detail that uh, Luis Silveira gave to us here you know it's not just it's not just weird looking or funny looking it is actually kind of terrifying uh this could be your dave davy jones kind of kind of character for for your 
uh, for your game. Uh, so yeah, absolutely, definitely check it out, you guys. Uh, whew, actually, yeah, Put it take there. this, take it away, take it all away. We can also. We are so while <laughs> while we we reveal the bundle to you guys. We are kind of opening up some space in the table here for uh, Marcia to bring us the the statue of the Dark Rider guys, later, it's big. which is yeah, it's gonna it's going to be a treat for for everyone, especially for me. Uh, okay, so let's move on to our next character, which is our Gorgon Mage. Mm -hmm. Love Gorgons. I uh, haven't seen them uh, represented all that much uh, in in miniature form. Yeah, we did we did one so far, which was the Medusa. Yeah, also for, awesome. Which was absolutely awesome. Uh, there are some minis that we do uh, in the bundles that are kind of designed to be good for uh, for painters to be like inspirational and to be like really cool for for painters to make a a, a good piece for them. And the Gorgon. The Gorgon Mage is one of them. Mm -hmm. The Gorgon Mage has concept art by Cleidiane Silva. And let's check out the sculpt by uh, Fabian Cardoso. You know, the, just a classic mage. I would say she's probably like a sorcerer. Uh, uh, and it's just like a gut feel, mm -hmm. right? Uh, she feels to me like more of a, a sorcerer than a, than a, a, a wizard or something yeah. like that. Uh, Warlock would also work for her. She's definitely dressed for a charisma based class. Yeah, or, or <laughs> yeah, or maybe even a a cleric of Zahir or something oh, like the right. the cloaked serpent. Yeah, so this is our Gorgon Mage, we sculpted by Fabian Cardoso, and let me just sh just show off a little bit here. Uh, and you're talking about painters and this mini has absolutely everything. The staff has different materials. You have smoke effects. You have uh, the snakes as hair. So you have absolutely... A yeah, it's, a, it's actually like the, a little bit more like tentacles in her, ha in her uh, head yes. than snakes. And the idea here is that it's like instead of being the, the front part of the, of the snakes, it's the back part of the snakes. Fair enough. Right? Uh, so she's also a, a gorgon, uh, like the, the knotted hair is snake-like and not like actual snakes. Uh, and one of the problems with like making it actual snakes is that sometimes in this size it looks just a little bit silly or the, or the supports are just a nightmare to remove. Mm -hmm. So there's just a lot that goes into it. But anyways, this is an awesome, awesome sculpt. Uh, that I can't wait to see how you guys are gonna are gonna paint. Uh, I can't wait to see the the results. Okay, so let's move on to our next character, and this one is going to be a little bit of a combo as well. So let's go over two characters, and then we're gonna go over how they interact. And first off, let's show off the crab juggernaut, and the crab juggernaut. Uh, it's another take on a. On a, a mini that we kind of already did, did that was the Umber Hulk, mm -hmm. and was the and was I th I believe it, it was Expedition to the Underworld, the bundle where it showed up. I'm not sure. This is a little bit of a different take, a, a, a more you know sinister, sinister take on it. Uh, it does remind me a little bit of the that South Park episode, Crab People, Crab <laughs> People, Crab People. Anyway. Uh, the, the concept art for the Crab Juggernaut was done by Mariana Livrais, as well as the concept art for the next character, which is the Draco Spider. And the Draco Spider is kind of our stand-in for the, for the Neogi, right? It's the, those, they are described in D&D &D as part eel, part spider, but eel may be just too disgusting for us. Mm -hmm. So we decided to go for a little bit more of a reptilian look. And I think it, it, it serves to uh, it serves to basically differentiate or or drag a spider, make it a little bit more unique. Mm -hmm. uh, let's check out the sculpts. Uh, and the sculpts for this one were done were both done by Danilo Chagas. And let's see there. I believe we, yeah, 
yes, and this is something that we decided to do. Uh, the Dragon Spider does have its own base, but it can actually, uh, it was designed so it could be attached to the back of the uh, Crab Juggernaut. I'll have it placed here when we have the overhead camera. Yeah, I think I think we actually showed it in the video. Okay. Uh, it's uh, with, let's, let's just go to the overhead camera. I, I don't think it's going to be like the best here. It's something like this. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm terrible at fitting it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, it does have like a, a specific spot uh, it's it's very very subdued, so it's easy to find. Uh, and one thing one thing that the neogi do is that they uh, they are very physically weak, but they do but they can order the umber hoax around, mm -hmm. and they actually like mount up on the umber umber hoax, use them as, as horses and as labor. And yeah, that was something that we wanted for you to be able to represent if you wanted to. Uh, and the other, uh, and yeah, and the actual like crab juggernaut is just, just actually like absolutely terrifying. I love the detail and the face has this very kind of insectoid kind yeah, of Yeah, it's kind of an insectoid, but also kind of a, kind of a, a school demonic face. Yes. It's, it's almost like it, this one could be used as a fiend if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. Very easily. Yes. Yes. And let me, let me just show uh, right now, like, and this is the base for the uh, actual Draco Spider. And I'm not going to be able to find, like, the right position for it now. Like, yeah. absolutely no way. Not sure. Yeah, or something like that. Let me just... Something like that. So it does have a base, but it does have, like, an alternative base, which is a whole other character. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this is it for this sculpts done by Daniel Chagas. Let me hand it off to Luca. And let's check out our next character. And this is another chunker. It's, I think it's the biggest uh, creature in this bundle. Mm -hmm. It is huge sized. Uh, the concept art for it was done by Guilherme Neri. Uh, and it has a cool story behind it. It's the Primordial Crab. And the idea for the Primordial Crab came from, actually, uh, so the Astral Sea is where the gods are born, mm -hmm. and is also where they go to die. There are whole cities there that are built on the corpses of dead gods, and like this, this giant, giant structures, which are kind of very, very uh, similar to the Celestial Head in Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, nowhere. Uh, we, we couldn't do, like, a city-sized corpse, but we could get, you know, as close as possible with the Primordial Crab. And that's how we ended up with like this, uh, with like this giant, giant, monstrous hermit crab that goes around filling up the skulls of dead gods. So let's check out the sculpt, this one by Pedro Young. Perfect. I love the, 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 the mixing of this crab kind of artifacts with uh, the tentacles and also this kind of horns and things that are kind of, they, they feel like they are morphing from the, the dead god's uh, skull. Yeah, it feels like, uh, it feels like the, the dead god had a little, a little horn going on. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's almost like the, whatever energies are still, uh, still live in the, this skull of the dead god are kind of fitting this giant, giant hermit, hermit crab it's that is growing the, in power. The crab changing the, the skull or the skull actually changing the, the, the shape of the crab. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, and let's actually... And this is a big guy, right? So we needed an enemy, uh, another inspiration for this, is that we needed an enemy big enough to be a threat to the ships, right? And just look at that. This would also make like a, a very very cool uh, just just uh, decoration piece. It feels like a, a, a normal sized crab with a normal sized skull if you if you, you print it in seventy five. Uh, yeah, movies. it would kind of have to be like an imp skull maybe. Yeah, yeah. but it, like if you print it on seventy five, it's this big. Like, can you can you hold a a, a seventy five millimeter uh, character? 
just so we have a comparison. Here you L go. Just look at how big this is. Uh, a little bit higher, please. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Yeah, just look at how big. Yum, 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 yum. And it's absolutely amazing and a lot of like really, really cool details and uh, just an amazing piece by our team. Um, Ashton uh, Betcher is asking for more Eldritch Horrors, please. <laughs> so, yeah. Yes, this, this definitely fits as one. As one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so yeah, people are, a couple of people are asking for Cthulhu Mythos stuff. And Cthulhu Mythos stuff is one of the things that people have asked us uh, a lot, actually. And that we... Actually, I think this one could, we can just leave it here. Sure thing. Uh, people have asked us to do uh, Cthulhu Mythos stuff for actually some time. Mm -hmm. And the only reason we we haven't done it is because it doesn't quite fit the, the medieval fantasy bundle. It doesn't quite fit uh, the sci-fi bundle. We may end up doing it in the future as a standalone release like Journey to Valhalla. Just to be able to do the justice. There are other projects that we are working on right now that we want to be able to do uh, before that. So, you know, it may be some time before we actually get to do uh, uh, just an Eldritch Horror model. But if you guys want to please Let do say just... it in, in our Discord server, in our uh, Facebook uh, community, just... Be vocal about that, and I'm sure you will be heard with time. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, and this one, and this one's like uh, was a complete accident. It's it uh -huh. actually turned out to be something very similar to one of the creatures in uh, Boo's Astro Menagerie, the the fifth the fifth edition uh, uh, Spelljammer monster book, uh, which is the Meteor Mimic. And we actually have a couple of versions of the Meteor Mimic. Let me just grab them here. Uh, the concept art for this one was done by Clay Gianni Silva. Uh, Fernandes? Hmm. hmm. Oh, sure. Yeah, um, for, for the S... No... Not yeah, yeah, for, for the Meteor Mimic is Clay Gianni Silva. Okay. And the sculpt for it, which we're going to go to now, is was done by Renato Hoa. And, you know, this one is kind of like a fairly, quote-unquote, simple model. And the idea of this one is that it will either just be floating around in the, in the Astral Sea, uh, kind of lost there, Maybe a group of adventurers found it uh, hiding as a chest and then threw it overboard in the, in the Astral Sea and left it behind. Uh, and it will just maybe hitch a ride with, with your, uh, your spelljamming vessel at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, you can print them uh, bigger like this and maybe they are just so heavy that they can actually disrupt the, the like. The, the gravity plane from the, the ship. Gra yeah, the gravity plane from the ship, and uh, maybe they, they can uh, stop your spell jamming vessel on its tracks. They so are great interactions also with the, the the smaller version of the ships for the the actual uh, yeah astral sea battles. Yes, uh, and we can actually show that a little bit later. Mm -hmm. So let's just showcase now the this is the like uh, regular version of the mimic. Uh, and you can just show it like maybe you show it as an asteroid heading heading towards the the ship, and the the characters are just trying to swerve uh, swerve beyond it, and then it just moves to intercept or something, and then it just turns into this monstrosity, which is absolutely amazing. It was an amazing job by Renato Hoa, uh, and you know. You can always we can always use more mimics. It's been a while since we did a, a mimic in a bundle. I think we actually did a we did a mimic for a, as an extra for the welcome pack. Uh, and it's there you can check it out. Uh, but yeah, it's been a while since we did a mimic as a part of a bundle, mm -hmm. and it's it's always you know it's always nice to have uh, a mimic, especially such a unique mimic. I I love the 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 design for this one. 
uh, even for painters, like I know Marcia had a really fun time painting the mimic. Even her her picture for uh, the longest while on the website was her with the the chest mimic. <laughs> so this one has a lot of details. You have the the fire kind of uh, meteor details, the yeah. eye, the mouth, the eye, the, the tongue, the mm -hmm. fleshy tongue coming out of the this stone thing that should, by our rights, be an object. Yes, <laughs> that has to yeah. be the most terrifying thing. In yes, the, in absolutely. The okay, so let's move on to our next creature in this bundle which is the void shark I really like this one. with the with the uh, concept with concept art by guilherme neri mm -hmm. and the void shark uh you know uh, i was i was actually i had a, a hand in the suggestion of this one because the bundle has a nautical team nautical team it also has uh you know a, a couple of uh like tangen tangential uh, uh, relations with stuff like uh, Guardians of the Galaxy or Thor or stuff like that, that. like Jackie, Jack Kirby stuff, mm -hmm. right? And one of the, th the things that I love from like Thor comics or, or Marvel in Space, or which is very, very kind of pulp sci fi and pulp fantasy inspired, is space sharks. Space sharks are absolutely terrifying. It's usually some some a hole mad scientist yes. that just what if we put <laughs> sharks in space? It's not like the eternal void is terrifying enough. So why don't we do it? Why don't we make sharks not yeah. need air so, at all? So yeah, I I love the idea of the I love this idea, and we decided to do uh, something like that that would fit the, the kind of like astronautical theme of the bundle mm -hmm. uh, the let's check out the sculpt by Luis Silveira I love the design for this one it kind of feels like this uh, this great white with um, the hammer head kind of mixed together it feels very organic still very kind of off in some way yeah and it looks fast it as looks well fast. right exactly uh, it looks fast, it looks terrifying, it looks a little bit eldritch uh, with the all of the extra eyes along the kind of hammer head here and the, the kind of like odds outside extra jaw, like a couple of different rolls of, of teeth. It feels almost like a spider with the jaw. Yeah, a little bit, kind of like insectoid. Yes. And that's, that's what makes it, you know, look a little bit eldritch. And... You know, a bite from this, it could probably, it could bite your head off and just keep swimming away. Uh, and maybe they are the the kinds of creatures that, who I forgot the, the name of the actual creatures in in, the, in Boost Menagerie, which are, there are a couple of different size variations. Yeah. And there's like a, a shark version. So you can even fish one of those. Yeah, you can yeah. even. I, I think it, in my game you could fish any one of those. You just need to deal with them after. Exactly. Yeah, which may not be as fun. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, uh, it, it does have an article team, so you could do a version uh, of Joss with the oh, yes. with the with this bundle, which is just like this big, big, gigantic void shark. That it's been uh, eating ships around the, the Rock of Brow or something. Not eating people in the ships. He's eating he ships. the ships. Yeah, <laughs> I love the that. people are just like the the ships for for something like this is just uh, it's just like a big cow zone. Yes, exactly. You have <laughs> a <feeling>. big <laughs> a big pizza roll or something. Uh -huh. uh, so yeah, absolutely terrifying. You do not want to fight one of those things. Uh, you do not have it, especially if you don't have a ship. Then you're just they're just screwed. Exactly. Uh, I love that it's a shark that can come from any direction. <laughs> yeah. And it's also like if you are doing an actual nautical adventure, this fits right in. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. This fits like right into that. It could be like a, a, a demonic shark or a mutated shark of some sort. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So let's uh, do our actual last character mini or last creature mm -hmm. before we move on to our objects and I know a lot of you guys have been expecting the have been waiting to check out uh, the objects uh, but this one is worth the wait because it's our flumph who and I just love seeing it we have finally managed to fit one of these into one of our bundles the concept artist for this one is Lua Marques and uh, 
and the sculptor uh, was Dave Song William. And they are just at the same time horrifying and adorable. I just absolutely love the flump floor for for uh, D and D. They are like. Very, very fun, and whenever I, I like explain, try to explain to people here in the office what a fluff is and like how they move and what they do, not just how they look, what they're about, yeah, what they're all about. It's yeah. just, it's just absolutely glorious. I love fluffs, yeah, and yeah, let's check out the. Uh, we actually gave him like, uh, if you look him straight on or like from the side, like the. The mouth, mouth, quote unquote, here uh, flaps just makes him look kind of dopey, I which is it. which is the right look for a flump. He feels like an animated burger, and it makes me so happy. Yeah, this this one uh, could definitely uh, who can you imagine this one as a as a shipmate, as an NPC shipmate oh, that, would be great. that like make him the the helmsman. And then, as he's trying to like turn the ship around, he just gets caught in the helm. Uh huh. Uh, the, just like so many good stuff that can happen with a with a fluff, with a fluff. on board. Yes, absolutely. It's and this one, uh, our fluff is a little bit different. He his uh, je- he is uh, jellyfish inspired. Mm-hmm. His not his design is a little bit more intricate. Uh, he does have like uh, the top. Uh, tentacles here, which are a little bit flat, flatter and a little bit almost like uh, almost seaweed-like. Mm-hmm. I would use this to make him like try to camouflage himself if you find him uh, underwater or something. Yes. Uh, but uh, you know, it's a little bit of a of a retelling of the fluff because they they deserve it. They are just such cool characters, and I absolutely love them. Yep, perfect. Let's see if um uh, oh uh, David J- uh, Jacobson is uh, commenting. I would love to see a burger paint job for the flump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a burger paint job would yeah. actually work like fairly well for this one. And I'm gonna save it here uh, because I, I, I as we've been talking, uh, it's been giving us some ideas. Oh, awesome! Perfect. Um, it. it uh, about the the void chart actually, and I, I love this because I love the reference uh, from Ross Felder reminds me of the Leviathans in Subnautica. Yeah. Yes, yes, the Leviathans as well. If you want to terrify your players underwater, you, you use this. Movie. And Absolutely. the way you do this is by using uh, what we're gonna talk about next. Yes. Uh, okay, so let's show the concept art for the ships first, and we're gonna show the concept arts for for both ships, and then we can move on to the videos for both. Okay, and the first ship is the Elder Raider, uh, and you may have uh, you may know the inspiration for this, especially if you've seen the, the trailer for for Baldur's Gate Three. Uh, it is definitely an inspiration for us in this regard. Uh, the concept arts for both sh- both ships were done by Katatao, and he did an absolutely amazing job. Uh, like they look so awesome. Uh, and the general idea with the ships was to do something a little bit smaller and more feasible to do for more of you than uh, our ship from Ship Ahoy was. Mm-hmm. Because although it is an awesome, awesome project and it's like a really, really big ship and it's awesome to and it's awesome to to print and build. It is a big commitment, right? It's like three and a half liters of resin, something like that. Mm-hmm. It's like it's quite big. It's it's a lot of parts. Uh, it is a big investment of time and resin and money and, and all of that stuff. This also made it possible for us to have two ships that you can yeah actually yeah. So what we did is we decided to do two smaller ships. Mm-hmm. So so these ones are like not even a, a liter of resin each. Uh, and they are like much much more manageable. You should be able to print them much faster. Uh, they are made to be printed in smaller resin 3D printers. Don't worry about it. Uh, and yeah, uh, this is the Elder Raider, and the next one is the Dragon Prize, which is uh, the Dragon Prize is probably my favorite piece for from this bundle. Uh, 
And the idea with these ships is that they're not like the, the big spelljamming vessels. They are the spelljamming vessels for a starting adventure par adventuring party. Mm -hmm. So you don't need a crew of like 10 people uh, to, to crew one of these. Uh, you can just start with like your four person adventuring party and they would do just fine with this ship. It will get them from adventure to adventure in, uh, in, uh, in, in the astral plane. And I think that, how expensive are they? Uh, uh, do you remember? I think it's 20,000. Yeah, they are, they are actually much, uh, much cheaper as well than the regular ships for it's, for it's good to mention we have stat blocks for both of these ships so that you can use in your your astro sea battles yes so um, let's let's show off the let's show off the videos for both of them so first off the elder raider oh the oh yes so yeah the elder raider we don't have it on the table with us right now it is a uh, because Marcia is painting, as Luca mentioned earlier. We're gonna have a, a video tutorial later this month on how to paint these awesome ships. Uh, and next up, we have let's check out the Dragon's Prize. And this one we actually do have on the table uh, that we can show off. And we're probably not gonna show off on the turntable here. We should probably just uh, let yeah let's yeah, grab it without the base because it's not glued for paint. Yeah, so this is how big it is, uh, and it's absolutely awesome. It is a little bit inspired by a lot of flying ships from uh, from fantasy, from like uh, high fantasy worlds, like the the Weatherlight from from Magic the Gathering, or like the the spell jamming vessels from D and D. It is inspired by that, and it's just you know just supposed to be fast and can you hand me some 32 millimeter miniatures sure thing. Uh, let me put some maybe the captain and this is how they fit on top of the ship uh, can we get the overhead camera now okay uh, you also mentioned I don't know if we are gonna be able to show this yeah I don't think we're gonna be able to show it but here's the here's the limbo shaper monk She's made to fit inside a little, little alcove there. Tilt it up a little bit. I'll try to get the, the light here. So she does have a little alcove. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not going to be able to. Uh, no, probably not. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but this is an awesome ship. And I believe, let me just check. Yeah, these things, like the, the sails, you can actually turn them. Uh, let, me, uh, let me get it uh, a little bit lower here. And you can actually turn them. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> they actually come off because they are not glued together yet. We haven't uh, glued them. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the Eld both the, the Elder Raider and the Dragon's Prize were sculpted by uh, Wendy Hedges Souza, and they are just absolutely incredible. Just look at all of the, that detail work on the side there and on the bottom. Like... People treat these ships like the, uh, they treat these things as works of art because they are, they are not just a boat that they're gonna, they're, that is gonna to take you from, from place A to place B. Mm -hmm. They, they have character to them and like your players are, are gonna fall in love with these ships until they are like horribly, horribly destroyed <laughs> uh, because it is bound to happen at some point when you're doing uh when you're doing uh astro adventures right you're gonna you're gonna lose the ship i think critical role in the last campaign they, they went through like three ships or something if i'm not mistaken they kind of hopped they kind of ship hopped from villain ship to villain ship yeah of. yeah yes. yeah I think um, I think was the who which which one was the first one that they had was it the ball was the leader? was the was the mistake, <laughs> the mistake and then it was the ball leader uh -huh. and then it was the the nine heroes the nine heroes uh, and yeah this is it it is quite big it is just not as big as as the ship from ship Ahoy, the uh, the harpy the harpy uh, but it's still. A quite an amazing feat and you can use it like this or you can use it on its base we have bases for both of them uh, here you go Luca if you could take it off my hands before I break it and something that we do have is the smaller version of the ships like the technical 
the tactical combat version of the ships of both of them so these are available for download right now let me uh showcase like just how big they are they are uh i believe they are like uh uh supposed to fit in like a nine by uh, uh, uh not nine uh like three squares by two squares which would be like 15 feet by by 10 feet or something but they are off scale right they are not uh any like actual scale these are the ones that you use when you're traveling and when you're fighting big big stuff like and let me just show off them here uh these are just so so cool and uh and for instance as we were saying before you can have the ship being persecuted by a huge leviathan thing and let me just set things up here so this is the ship, this is the Void Shark, you know, just look at this. It's just the right size to, to start devouring the ship, as is the, the Meteor Mimic. Let me just put it here. I love how the, the Astro Sea kind of gives way to, like, mismatching sizes and getting gargantuan creatures and yes. every type of different monster there. Yes, or even uh, if you're if you're feeling kind of silly, uh, maybe you have a giant fluff atta attacking the, the trying to hug the ship. Not trying to hug the ship, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, definitely not trying to devour it. No, uh, which would be kind of terrifying. Yes, like just just this big dumb face uh, <laughs> showing up on the. Kind of on, st on starboard. The one giant eye kind of peeking in the. The, the inside of the ship. And if you want to go really crazy, really crazy, kind of uh, even, maybe even bigger than an Astro Dead Dreadnought kind of thing, oh, yeah, you can uh, you can go all the way up to the Primordial Crab. Yes. That's right? kind of a, a, a Kraken kind of attack. <laughs> um, if you want to show off the, the 32 Yeah, the 32 millimeters, millimeters uh, it, would also work It's very so well. big that even the 32 is kind of a threat to a ship. So yeah, there you go. Yes. So yeah, we do have both of them. We have the Elder uh, Raider and the Dragon Sprite as small ships. You guys asked us for it as soon as we released the concept art. And we, yeah, it we should do them. Uh, it just opens up a lot of possibilities. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, people are asking now, can we get a mini Lady Harpy? Can we get a, a mini, like... Uh, people have asked us to, for, to do a, a mini... A mini version of the of the ships from uh, from our Valhalla set, and you know it's a possibility now. We're not gonna get to it right away, but yeah, it's it's definitely on our radar now. So thank you so much, Katatau and Wender, for an amazing job on this one. And let's move on. Let's show off actually the uh, a couple a couple of the different uh, a couple of the kind of more standard objects uh, and let me just uh, we do have a couple of different asteroids the the asteroids had their concept art done by Aleph Mengali, Aleph Mengali mm -hmm. and they were sculpted by Victor Araujo uh, and the idea with this ones is that they can compose your uh, your scenario and you know they uh, do fit uh, 32 millimeter miniatures quite yeah, well on top of them for for gameplay um, for gameplay or for dioramas especially. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, let's just show off a couple of them, and I'll hold the mini because they are not attached or anything. This one is the we call it uh, asteroid one or two or something, but it's actually like the internally we call it the little moon. It just you know, mm -hmm. it just. It just works so well, and I think it would work perfectly for a diorama. Like you don't even glue the the limbo shaper monk to the to, to her base. You just glue her directly to this asteroid. That's right. You can also use the the little asteroid for for ship combat. It would be like a um... yeah. You can set up. You can set up. Uh, ooh, let's let's try to show it on the overhead camera here. Uh, let's open up some space. And it would be something like this, right? Like the, uh, can I have the Helder Raider? Yeah. 
Yes, absolutely. yes. Like the your your uh, ship is passing through here, and then the and then the Elder Raider comes around and attacks it. And you know, the, the asteroids are just little set pieces that can help in a lot of different ways, either for tactical combat or for uh, or for dioramas. And that's that's the point of them. They don't have to be uh, that complicated. Uh, the and yeah, that's it for the asteroids. We do have something a little bit bigger. We it has tiny in the name, but you know, uh, it can still be fairly big. Okay. Uh, okay. So let's showcase here the tiny planet. The tiny planet has concept art by Aleph Mengali, and it has uh, was sculpted by Fabian Car Fabian Cardoso. Uh, and the idea of the, the little planet is just like, again, sometimes we do some pieces like the tiny planet that are actually meant for painters, for painters to do some cool stuff with them. Uh, this is a little piece that's for, for painters and collectors, it's for, for people who like to make dioramas. Uh, you can, uh, it does have a space, does have a space on top for you to put a, a mini uh, it works very very well. It has like all of these little details and I should mention we do have assembling guides in the magazine for the for everything that has more than like four pieces okay so uh, for for the ships for the little planet everything now we're going to make it standard to just have an assembly guide in the magazine for anything over four pieces. So like five pieces plus, it starts to get a little bit confusing. We're gonna have a, an assembly guide. So yeah, uh, the little planet is inspired, uh, I don't know if people have noticed, yeah, by uh, by uh, the Kaioshin planet from Dragon Ball as well. Mm -hmm. You know, just this little silly planet with gravity. Uh, I, I am sure your players can find something like a, a little, maybe a little Yoda into 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 this little planet so let me just hold it here to give you guys a little bit of sense of scale uh it is quite big uh there have been some ideas uh, this is designed so i believe the the middle is hollow right so you could do some you know you could print it on uh translucent resin and do some led stuff especially with like the the lake going around the equator here uh so yeah, it's just really, really a really really nice piece. Yeah. Uh, maybe you can, maybe one of you, like the first of you that turns this into a lamp uh, and posts a picture on the community, I'm gonna personally grant you access to like whatever bundle you want because that would be amazing. <laughs> uh, so yeah, if you guys are up for this, yeah, it's just an amazing piece. And finally, uh, we have a, a question about this one. Uh, yes, Mohamed Riza Sigun. Does Little Planet come in a smaller scale? Uh, I don't think Little, little Planet. No, I don't think so. It, it's this. This is the thirty-two millimeter scale. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it wouldn't be too hard. Uh, I, I think it's all. I think it's all cut, right? Do we have a no cut version? I could ask for a no cut. Uh, here, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna ask the team to do a no cut version. Uh, it's not gonna have any supports, but then you can like scale it up or down like however you want to, and you know do a do a smaller version. Uh, so yeah. Uh, so next up we have uh, and last but not least for this bundle, because this bundle has had a lot of stuff. And a lot of like very very cool like highly detailed stuff uh, we have a prop yes. uh, <laughs> as if like the little planet and the ships weren't enough we have a magic item the scrying spyglass uh, the concept art for this one was was uh, done by Aleph, Aleph Mengali and the sculpt was done by Anderson Pioli and yeah, Luca, do you want to tell us a little bit about the, how the, the scrying spyglass works? Yeah, it's an awesomely detailed mini. We have the stat block for this in our magazine, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's kind of this um, scrying object 
but also that uh, feels like this kind of a bottle with a map lost in sea, where you can see the last three places it's cried on, and maybe yeah. find treasure through. Yeah, that. It, it's a little bit of an excuse to to like you give your players a magic item that actually starts a little bit of an adventure. Yeah. So if you want them to go somewhere, you they can just find some places like kind of logged into into scrying magic of the of the of the scrying spyglass. Another thing that we should mention is that it uh, is a, a scrying item that does allow uh, sharing with other members of the party. Mm -hmm. uh, we like that idea. We, uh, and yeah, we, it does have... Uh, let me show it on the overhead camera here. We do have like a, a little piece for it, a lens for lenses for, for both sides for it. Uh, it is, uh, you just need to print it on translucent resin. There, there are a couple of techniques that you can use it to make it like really, really translucent. Uh, and we do have a video on it, right? Yeah. Not yet. Oh, yeah. not yet. Oh, but we're going to have a video on it. Okay. Uh, you guys may notice that the, that the cover is not attached and there's a reason for that. We're going to change it a little bit. So right now, the, the, this piece, this little piece piece here is not available, the, the lens cover. Uh, and it's because we are modifying it a little bit to fit better into the model. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's going to be made available soon-ish, right? Uh, uh, some fun like, things you can do with it, because I, I believe it would be really difficult to get it to be um, a, kind of a working spyglass, but you can put a, a kaleidoscope or something uh, inside. inside. So yeah. it has kind of this crying magical effect to it. Um, yeah. Yeah, just a really, really cool piece. Let me just play with it a little bit. <laughs> I love it. I love a magic item that you can show a treasure to your players that they have no idea how to get. Yeah. It's very it's very tempting to put it in, in, in a, a, a piratey adventure. Uh... Oh yeah, we should. Uh, Rex is saying uh, res resin is toxic. Uh, you should be careful with it around your eyes. I haven't been actually getting it like anywhere close to my eyes. I've been using like a little trick with my fingers. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, we should probably put that warning on the on the website. Yeah. You should probably paint this before you get it, like prime and paint it before you get you get it anywhere close to your eyes. But it's going to be like a very very cool cosplay piece as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. Uh, and when it closes, it almost looks like a little scroll case or something. Yeah, it could be used for that. Like just print the, the top piece and use it as a, a scroll case. Yeah, as a scroll case, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, like print the, the covers for the for both sides. Yes. Yeah, we can we could actually <laughs> we can all can almost do that ourselves. Yeah. Okay. It even has kind of the like the little detail I think here so that you can attach a chain. Oh yeah, uh it does have a couple of uh mm -hmm. a couple of uh loopholes here. Yeah. Uh which you, you can use to to attach a little leather strap or something mm -hmm. uh and just be able to carry it it's, around a little bit it's easier. It's pretty much how much you want to custom this item because it it has a lot of details that you can yeah. really um uh, improve upon with with painting and, and crafting. Yeah, uh, and now, uh, before we, we end the live stream, we're going to open it up to, to uh, q and A Q&A section. Mm -hmm. And uh, we should probably let uh, Marcia know and let some, someone uh, come and uh, go and help her bring Oanomar here. Because it is big, it is giant. Yes. So, yeah, uh, if you could put that away, we're going to need a lot of space for it. So, this is it, guys. This is the Q&A section now. Uh, if you guys, oh, actually, we do have one announcement that we need. Let's go over the announcements again, and then we have uh, something new to say, uh, and then we can get to the Q and A section. But like, start dropping your questions, and then we we're gonna get to them as soon as we're done. So uh, just again, the uh, the new loyalty reward, uh, the new three month loyalty reward. Uh, Morgan, the Hex Witch, and Shodi, her familiar, her weird, weird familiar, is going to be available later today in 32 and 75 millimeter scales. Oh, actually, yeah, just, just drop this in here. Do, yeah. Oh my god. It's absolutely huge. It's gigantic. 
Uh, this is still a work in progress, guys. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's it's big. And we're just gonna leave it on the table. I'll try to just proto turntable this. Yeah. You, y'all gotta see the detailing on the eyes for this creature. It's awesome. Yeah, we should probably like turn it around the other way again, just so people can see it as the concept art. Yes. Uh, but yeah, uh, this this large reward is already available. It's our 12 month large reward. If you have or less 12 uh, 12 months of bundles, you are eligible to receive these in 32, 75, and the statue version. I actually have like the 75 here, and next to the statue version is like nothing, mm -hmm. right? It's it's so small. Uh, the statue version also, our statue versions now also come with like special bases. Uh, so yeah, and this one is is awesome. The three month large reward, the new one also has it. And as I was saying, Morgan, uh, the hex witch, and uh, Shrody will be available a little bit later today in the 32 and 75 millimeter, millimeter versions and the statue version will be available next week uh, by Friday, by Friday next week, the 9th uh, plus a prop so her wand will be available as a prop as well uh, what else we have here? Uh, Mad Mage's experiment is on sale right now so check that out uh, it's an awesome, awesome bundle with a lot of like cool stuff, some classic D and D monsters, and for the people that weren't here in the beginning of the live stream, uh, we also will have uh, three videos coming out this month, uh, I believe. Um, it is the painting guide for the both of the ships uh, from Astro Looters. We have a kind of different take on the the bundle trailer for this uh, for this bundle specifically. And we will have a painting guide for this. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, expect yeah it's some gonna, cool stuff. It's going to be out. awesome. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, I think this is it for announcements. Mm -hmm. And now, without further ado, the name of our next fantasy bundle, the Wink Wink October fantasy bundle, <laughs> the name is going to be Night hunters guys again night hunters uh what i can say right now is that it is a very very appropriate bundle for halloween inside that bundle we have a special version of one of the minis that is designed for halloween to just up the ante a little bit mm -hmm. and the special reward for uh for Halloween that we had last year, Jimmy Hollow had will be offered again as part of this new October bundle. So yeah, we are doubling up. Get ready for spooky times. I'm just gonna say some people that that have been making some comments uh, about a very specific creature are gonna be vindicated on this one. You guys know who you are. You've been commenting about it, so... Yeah, yeah. Every time we do a particular type of mini, people are like, Yeah, that, but not this. Yes. Come on. <laughs> Y'all are going to be really very for this one. I'm excited to see what yeah. you guys think. So yeah, Night Hunters is coming up next. Concept art for it coming out next week, so stay tuned to our community. Okay, so let's go back a little bit. And if you guys have any questions, this is the time for the Q&A. Uh, let's, let's check out the chat here. Uh, the planet. Okay. Uh, what if you curious? Not to discuss anymore. Looks like printable and at the end as well. Some absolute wild princess size. Next to loot, real skip, partial loot. <laughs> next, uh, Fabio Fernandes is saying, next loot, real scale project will be tiny planet. Ah, uh, yes. maybe you could do it. Put it on, on top of the building, like the, the Daily Planet. Oh, I love that. <laughs> kind of this, this uh, yeah, I love that Superman reference. I, I would love to paint, like, the road yellow to get this kind of very uh, Wizard of Oz kind of reference going on. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, I love the comment, by the way, uh, from Crazy Round Man. There's something charming about having the, uh, to live stream from behind a horse's rear end. Yes. Uh, it's, it's, it's a great experience. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Hudson Lee is asking, will we find out about the community hero? Yes, you will. The concept art for it should be done sometime next week. We have chosen community hero and we uh, are in the process of like preparing the concept art. Uh, we haven't talked about it yet because we don't have anything to really show for it. We like to have the, the art ready so you guys know to be excited about it. And it's, it is going to be available uh, uh, for free for the whole community. Uh, and more info on that probably next week. Let's see here. Uh, is a Dark Sun bundle possible in the future? Lucky, Lucky TE is asking. So Dark Sun, I saw some rumors of Dark Sun, like uh, there were some leaks on D&D Beyond, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, so Wizards is probably going to do something with Dark Sun. Probably not next year, but maybe 2024. Dark Sun is a tricky uh, scenario to do. Mm -hmm. It is not like standard medieval fantasy at all. It's kind of D&D Mad Max. Uh, it feels kind of very Conan. Yeah, it's Conan the Barbarian yes. inspired, but even like lower tech. So it's not to everyone's taste. Uh, if we ever do a bundle like that, it's probably it may not be part of our fantasy subscription. It may be part of something separate. Uh, and uh, we do, unfortunately we don't have Dark Sun in the plans right now. Uh, I love it. I would love to do uh, something with Dark Sun. But it's very, very hard to... Uh, it's very, very niche. And it's very hard to, to please people with it. Mm -hmm. uh, um, we have uh, from Crimson Photo G. Any chance we could get uh, more commoner NPC type minis? Uh, uh, we try to do them... We used to do like an NPC per bundle almost. Mm -hmm. uh, we kind of stopped doing that because people were asking us to do more playable characters. Yeah. Uh, and more creatures and more monsters and we can only do so many minis in a bundle uh, but yeah if you want more NPCs just let us know in the community uh, we will have a poll at some point in the near future about the, the fantasy bundle we had one for sci-fi last week and uh, it's going to have a bunch of questions like what kinds of minis you would like to see more of uh, so just let us know in that and we will and we'll get it onto it. Unfortunately, like we kind of have to juggle the the wants and needs of like every member in the community. Um, Rexidus is also asking, how goes the effort to make more swappable heads? Uh, um, the the swappable heads things is uh, again is very it's very situational. It fits into a particular type of bundle, and we uh, it may not be we may not simply not be able to do it in a in a, in a bundle. We will have I I believe one swappable head for the next sci-fi bundle, and there's a, a couple of options uh, for. Who I, I I shouldn't say it because there's a couple of swappable head options for uh, for some bundles later this year that oh, haven't yeah. been announced yet. Mm -hmm. uh, um. uh, Todd Harris is asking how do how do you go about deciding on concept art? Do you ever send them back to be tweaked? Yes, we sent, we sent them back a lot. There's a lot of concept art that you guys never get to see. There's some concept art that we we actually decide this is. Actually, very good concept art, but doesn't fit this bundle, doesn't fit the idea that we wanted. So we basically take that concept art and save it for later, for like a future bundle to do sometime in the future. I would love, though, to be able to release like the different poses for the same uh, for the same characters at some point. Like the, the little details on the concepts, because it's a very... Uh, yeah, usually, usually our concept artists when they are like they they first do they don't do like the full concept all at once. Mm -hmm. They do some line art first, just to sketch things out, give us some options for like poses and different silhouettes and stuff like that. And we usually decide on a pose. And uh, I can actually say uh, we were actually checking out the poses for loyalty rewards uh, yesterday. And one of the things that I, and it, and. What I said happened yesterday. So 
Aura was like, yeah, this this pose is very good. I, I think I prefer this one for a lot for a larger reward. But let's save uh, pose C that we're not using right now for uh, a character in the future. Okay. Uh, we we're probably not gonna do like a bunch of poses of the same character in the same uh, in the same bundle. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be a little bit trickier for us to do something like that. Yeah. Uh, Still love love the concepts, love the concept from the concept artists here. Luke. I would love an art book at some point. Just mm -hmm. getting enough bundles done and just getting that uh, that art book for concepts. Um, <laughs> Let's see here. Hook out there. Let's see here. Bob did is saying, not a question, but I, I am loving all the details and the models. You keep outdoing yourselves every month, and I'm so grateful for all the hard work from the entire team. Thank you so much, Bob did. Uh Yeah, it, it really means a lot to us when you guys respond well to a bundle, respond well to a product. We, uh, and even when you don't, we are always checking out the community and trying to, to figure out uh, what how we can improve and how we can do better. Uh, <laughs> Jason Bradley is saying, right, I need a resin printer that can do this statue in one print. I don't think, is there even one, is there even one like that? Like I maybe an, like a, a big 8K printer, like one of the... Maybe not the, the whole thing. Like yeah, maybe not the... Parts. Yeah, maybe in a couple of parts you would be able to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. I'm catching up with, with the chat here. Have you found any more interesting ones, Luca? Um, I have, I have, I had one. Um, this is an interesting one because uh, it kind of shows mm -hmm. uh, how much they like this this kind of um, uh, characters that we do. From Ashton uh, Betcher, feel free to be as vague as possible, uh, but can we expect any more devils before the end of the year? Ooh, let me think on that. Uh, I. Uh, Ooh, I'm actually not sure. There are a couple of bundles that are still in concept art phase, mm -hmm. and I haven't checked those out, so I'm actually not sure. Uh, but I'm not sure. Like straight up devils is not on the because there's you know we we do talk about like long term long term plans, and I think we had a, a devil bundle planned for some time. Uh, early next year mm -hmm. but i'm not sure about that those models haven't been confirmed uh there's a question about Ju uh Game for is about the new website uh are there png renders available in any way on the new website please because i can't find them only some cropped versions on a white background and elias silhouettes so uh on the old website we tend to to upload the, the pngs uh not for the individual models or anything like that. Uh, it is it is a request that we have been getting for a while to get the downloadable uh, PNGs and images of the of the minis in the new website. It is something our team is working on, but they had to to fix some more important stuff later uh, before that. So we just did a, a kind of a big overhaul of the download system. And now you you get to see like the uh, it's a little bit easier to locate stuff and to download stuff and to see what you want to to download. Uh, but the download the downloadable uh, uh, images are something that are on our radar. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. Uh, we have one from Suna uh, Kokaro. Uh, would you consider doing a separate bundle? Uh, that's just like town a town bundle, like a blacksmithing place, a baker's place with NPCs. Um, we usually don't do bundles from uh, just one specific subject or, or just one type of mini, uh, but every bundle does have objects, so I'm sure you could um, kind of work out a, a, a pretty much a full town from, from the different bundles we have here at Luke. Yes. Uh, yeah, usually like one of the... The main pillar of D&D that actually uses minis is combat. So mm -hmm. most of our bundles are focused on like uh, stuff you can fight and characters you can use to fight that stuff with. Yes. Uh, uh, it, it's just kind of a, uh, a... It's just kind of a, a 
a, a necessity of the product, right? Uh, Juni Gamefer is asking, when we will get an elf male ranger with a bow? I believe actually very soon. And I'm going to leave it at that because anything else would be a spoiler. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Jason Bradley, Loot, have you ever seen a piece of concept art that has made you tailor an entire release around it? Uh, usually we, we do a lot of planning of our bundles. Uh, uh, so even before we have like any concept art, we usually have an idea around what the bundle, like the full bundle is going to be. Uh, but I will say the answer to your question is actually yes. And you're gonna find out more about it in December. So yeah, uh, there's some very very interesting stuff coming. Mm -hmm. So let's see what else here. Uh, plus, this actually can fit the book cover prop. Uh, plus one for Bob just saying plus one for an art book, especially if you can fit in, uh, if you can fit it into book cover prop. Yeah, we we are we were actually talking about uh, doing like organizing our concept art better on the website so you guys can just kind of go through it uh, and see kind of the evolution of Lutz concept art. There's some stuff like our, our earlier stuff, we haven't even released the concept art, but we have it. It's just like stored away somewhere in, uh, mm -hmm. in our files. Let's see here. Uh, uh, Ashton Becker, uh, so can we expect another Halloween one-off mini this year? I loved last year's. So as I mentioned before, uh, we're not going to have like an extra, uh, like another extra bonus reward, bonus Halloween reward. We will bring last year's reward back and kind of the whole of October's bundle is going to be very very halloween mm -hmm. and with one specific mini inside of it with a with a halloween option a halloween alternate and that's how we were designed to do it the and jimmy hollow had the the pumpkin head ripper monster eye collector from last year will be coming back for both fantasy and sci-fi Unfortunately, like we like we wanted to do an extra one, but right now we are kind of uh, uh, catching up to lost time on the loyalty rewards, mm -hmm. and we don't want to be late on any loyalty rewards again this year or next year. So we didn't have time to do an extra one. We already had a couple of commitments with community hero and loyalty rewards, so that's why. Uh, this is a good question to kind of end the live stream on um, from Anthony. Uh, what are your thoughts on 1D&D? &D? Ooh, 1D&D. &D. I have a lot of thoughts on it. There's a lot of like really, really cool stuff on there. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff that... It is playtest material, so it's not set on stone. People don't need to be like all, uh, all frazzled about it. Uh, there is one thing that I will say, though. Uh, they, I am uh, like primarily a dungeon master. They will not take away my crits. Yes. I will still crit with my monsters. Of course, there's some caveats to that. Like, if they if they overhaul like the whole monster system so that like the rechargeable ability things like make sense, I may not feel the need to crit with my monsters. But you know, it's fun to crit, and I can usually get around a, a weird crit or a bad crit in a in a game. I have enough sway as a dungeon master to like figure it out, right? Uh, Another th uh, one thing that worries me is that, with, specifically with that crit stuff, is that they did say that uh, one D and D would be like kind of backwards compatible with everything in fifth edition. Everything in the book uh, kind of seems uh, like it, it would fit that it would be backwards compatible, except for the implication of that. Uh, that natural 20 crit rule, mm -hmm. which is uh, if they're going to change the monsters so that you, so that you don't need to crit of them, uh, 
then that means that those new monsters will not be uh, like it means that your old monsters will not be compatible with that particular rule. Especially like specialized monsters like um, campaign bosses like uh, Strahd or you know creatures that will mm -hmm. will need to be revised to be able to uh, fit one D&D. Yeah, a, a, a couple of actually like NPCs had abilities like this NPC creates on a 19 or 20. Mm -hmm. So they had like the, their combat tactics kind of geared around crits. Yes. And if those are not going to be updated because they're not gonna they're not gonna just give you the, the updated creatures you know it's going to be one of those uh uh menagerie type things that uh, the, uh, the, the like the the uh, mordenkainen Mor Mor uh Those? guide to the multiverse or something yeah guide to the yes exactly uh so you know here's everything you you already own again if yes. you want to buy the updated version so that's worrying to me. That's like that's the only thing that's worrying to me. Mm -hmm. uh, and like, I'm probably gonna get to buy a lot of this stuff. Like, loot is probably gonna get to buy. But it is kind of you know, there is kind of like there was in fourth edition uh, in, from two point five to fourth edition a little bit of a feeling of betrayal if they kind of if we end up feeling like we are forced to buy the new content. Mm -hmm. So. That's the only caveat I have so far. Uh, as a DM, I also don't like the idea of just always sitting on a crit. I, I know people like that, but I use that uh, the rule, that specific ruling of not always sitting on a on an ability check on a natural twenty. I use that as a two for a lot of other stuff. I'm not gonna get into it here. And we should probably do a podcast about this or something because oh, because I'm uh, because it's I'm, I'm extending myself. Yeah. If, so yeah. If you like that, do comment down below. Do do uh, show that you like that. But yeah, uh, uh, I, I really like the idea of one D and D. It's it's gonna be interesting and, and a lot of stuff is, is is gonna change. Do you have any any last comments? Uh, no, I think not. I think we are good for today. There are a couple more, more questions, but you guys can feel free to ask these questions on the on the community, on the Discord, or on Facebook, and we will do our best to answer them. Okay. So yeah, everyone, this is it for today. This is Astro Looters, and there's a lot of cool stuff uh, coming. Uh, look out for the announcements next week. Sure thing. Bye bye, everyone. Thank you so much for showing bye -bye. up.